Module 1, Problem Number 3, a researcher wanted to determine the number of televisions in households. He, con he conducts a survey of 40 randomly selected households and obtains the data in the accompanying table. Complete parts A through H below. All right, so look, before we dive into the problem, I just wanted to point out this icon right here. If you click on it, that gives you the data set. Those are the 40, um, those 40 observations from the survey. So let's go ahead and go to part A. Are these data discrete or continuous? Explain. Remember, discrete data is data that's countable whole numbers, whereas continuous can take on any real value, such as 1.2, 1.6, 1.000012, anything like that with decimals, fractions, any real number. In this case, we're looking at number of televisions. We don't expect this to go on to infinity. It's a very finite number of responses, and it's whole countable numbers, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that means that we know we're dealing with discrete and not continuous data. So that leaves us with, with options C and D. The first one here is that uh, the given data are discrete because they can only have whole number values, which we know is the answer. Let's just double check part D said, or excuse me, option D says the given data are discrete because they can take on any real value. Like I just said, this is whole number values. So we know C is the answer. Check our answer, fantastic. Construct a fre frequency distribution of the data. You could do a couple things here. Since we have such a small data set of just 40, you can just go through and count it manually and just do tally marks. That would probably be the quickest. I'm gonna show you really quick how to do it in Excel. I will say that for something like this simple, it's much easier in Excel than in StatCrunch. That's just my personal preference. So if you click on this little icon right here, you can click open in StatCrunch, copy to clipboard or open in Excel. If you click open in Excel, this spreadsheet's going to come up and just with this column. So this, this column here is all 40 of the observations from this data set here. So now we have them all here in um, rows eight, uh, 1 through 40. So what I went ahead and did over here, let's put a little um, box around it just to make it, well, it's fine. So here we have frequency and relative frequency. You'll see in part C, we're gonna be looking at relative frequency. So here's our possible values, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Our frequency is just the tally mark. Now again, you can't just count, like I said, or in Excel, you can use the count if function. The count if says count in this range if this value occurs. So in this case, we're saying count from A1 to A40, that's here all the way down to 840. And if the value is zero, you see I put the dollar signs there. That's just something that you can use in Excel when you're copying or dragging down to copy a function or an equation. What it does is it'll automatically change the range thinking that you want to move it. In this case, we don't want to change the range. We want it to look through A1 through A40 for all five of these, or excuse me, all six of these values. So that's why I put the dollar, if you put the dollar signs there, you can copy the the formula down and it won't change those. So as you see here, I copied it down here, but now we're looking for ones. Here we're looking for twos, threes, fours, and fives. So that just counted it for me. It's the same thing as me going through with a tally mark. So let's go ahead and put what we found into the answer here. Two, 15, 12, eight, two, and one. Check answer. Excellent. One thing I want to point out before going on to part C is we see a bulk of our data is right here at the one and two televisions. One of the things I've talked about through the discussions was like, what did you expect? Well, looking at this problem, I really don't expect a bunch of people to have zero TVs. And I really don't expect a bunch of people to have five TVs. I kind of do expect it to be on the lower end on one to two televisions and then maybe a few at three and four, but definitely the bulk to be on the lower end, and that's what we see there. All right, part C, construct a relative frequency distribution of the data. Again, the nice thing about doing this in Excel is that I can just very easily write a function for that. So remember, the relative frequency is the number of those in that, in that um, occurrence, so here the number of zeros, divided by the total number of observations. Remember, we have 40 households in our survey. So here we're gonna say that cell divided by 40. Remember how earlier I mentioned the dollar signs here, I'm just gonna drag on down because I want it to change. 
So here we have 2 divided by 40, that 15 divided by 40, 12 divided by 40. See how it's referencing that cell next to it. That's the same thing as saying, just for your understanding, that's the same thing as saying 2 divided by 40 or 15 divided by 40. See that, how it's the same? Equals 12 divided by 40. So remember, the relative frequency is just the number of occurrences in that value divided by the total number. Another thing I want to point out, if you ever want to check your answer, let's say you do this manually and you want to check your answer, the total or the sum of your relative frequencies has to equal one. So we're going to check that real quick. There we go, one. So again, I just use the sum function over those. So let's go ahead and put our answers back in here. Point zero five. 0 0.375, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, and 0 0.025. All right, check answer. Nice work. All right, part D. What percentage of households in the survey have three televisions? We can go right back up to our relative frequency his, uh, relative frequencies, and we can take that number. So that's 0.2. Remember, to get the percentage, you multiply by 100. So 0.2 times 100 gives us... 20%. Check the answer. Good job. Now here, what percentage of households in the survey have four or more televisions? That means how many have four or five? That means we need to add these numbers together to see who has four or more. That's 0 0.075. Just doing it in my head, 0 0.075. Remember, we're dealing with a percentage. So 0 0.075 times 100 gives us 7.5%. So we can say that 7.5% of the households have four or more televisions. Now, part F, construct a frequency histogram of the data. Choose the correct graph below. We can do this a couple of ways. One, we can just compare our values from our frequency diagram, or our, excuse me, our frequency distribution and see which, ones, which uh, histogram here matches with it. And I can tell you right now it's going to be this one because you see we have a little, more, and then it tapers off. So here we have a little more and then it tapers off. But we can also generate this histogram in StatCrunch to double check and to see how to do it. So I'm gonna click on the data set and then I'm gonna open in StatCrunch. All right, so here, as you see, it opens our data set. We're gonna to go to Graph, Histogram, select the variable and click Compute. No big work here. We can see already that the shape of the histogram right there matches with option D, which is what we already said from just looking at our frequency distribution. Check answer, fantastic. All right, part G, construct a relative frequency histogram of the data. Choose the correct graph below. Here's a secret. Your histogram should look, or your frequency histogram should have the exact same shape as your frequency histogram. Remember, the only difference here is that we're dividing everything by 40. So it keeps the same proportions. It's just a different scale on your y-axis. So here we have 0 to 0.4. Up here we had 0 to 16. So let's go ahead and select option C. Check answer. Well done. All right, describe the shape of the distribution. Now, without looking at the mean or the median, I can tell you this tail over here on the right side, that means it's right skewed. So let's look skewed right, because that tail is on the right side and the bulk of the data is on the left. Check answer, fantastic. That's how you do number three. If you have any questions, let me know.